Paul said, if Christ died for all, he said, we thus judge. It's a judgment. Everybody thinks a Christian life is just like God putting you on autopilot. Paul said, the love of Christ constraineth us. Why? Because we thus judge. How did the love of Christ constrain Paul? By judgment. He said, here's my judgment. That if he died for all men, then we're all men dead. And in that he died for all, that they which live should no longer live unto themselves. That's that conversation right there. Should no longer live unto themselves, but unto him that died and rose again. Now Paul's going to talk about another conversation in Philippians, isn't he? Remember in the end of Ephesians 4, he says that you put off concerning the former conversation. And then in Philippians, he said, our conversation is in heaven from which also we look for the Savior. Amen. God's salvation has to do with quickening us. Amen. By grace, ye are saved. The grace and this salvation here is God giving life to what was dead. Amen. God, by his grace, has given you a life that is not yours. Wow. You say, what are you talking about? Let's go back and look at some stuff. Leviticus 18.5 Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. But where were you at? Dead in sins. You didn't live in them. You were dead in sins. That's who you were. And the righteousness of the law said, if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Romans 10, 5, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. What? what kind of quote is that, Paul? You better, get, you better get Brian Ross's new book. He'll explain it to you. Paul quotes it like that for a reason. Back here it was, If a man do, here it is, The man which doeth. That's Jesus Christ. Did Jesus Christ keep the statutes and judgments of God? And so Christ being a, listen, what is, what is Paul declaring here? Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth for Moses. This is an explanation of how Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. He is the man that doeth those things. And because of that, he lives in them. He has eternal life. And what God is giving you through faith is not you through your works acquiring life. It is God freely imparting to you life through the righteousness of that man. He is giving you a life that is not yours. He is quickening you with a life that you don't have. He has taken what was dead in sins, walking according to the course of this world, conversating in the lust of our flesh, and he took that dead sinner and quickened him with what? Christ. Amen, amen, amen. We are not ministers of the letter. Why? The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. God has given you a life that is not yours. And so by God, by His grace, is imparting to us through faith the very life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, Ephesians talks about the old man and the new. And Paul says, this old man was dead, and he had a walk and a conversation. And Paul talking about this new man. What is the new man? It is something created by the workmanship of God that is quickened. It is quickened with life and it has a walk created unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And so the salvation being spoken of here, guys, is not justification. It is quickening of what is dead to change the walk in the conversation to this. It's about giving life to the dead sinner. How does God do it? By grace. Through faith. Amen? As Paul said in Galatians, man, people think of grace as this 
You know, people say, I'm not under the law, but under grace. But they actually think that grace is under them. You're still under something. And if you can't point, when people say, I'm under grace, point to it. Show me. Show me what it is. Give it. Give, tell me. Goodness. Grace through what? Faith. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. Hearing by what? So where's grace? It's in the book. When you say you're under grace, it means you're under this. The difference between grace and law is not righteousness. The standards and morals of right and wrong did not change between testaments. What changed is the ministry. And what God is doing in the New Testament is by grace imparting to you a life and righteousness that you didn't have. And He's given it to you freely that you may live, as Paul said in Galatians 2.19, for I through the law am dead to the law. Why? That I might live unto God. You want to see how he's dead? I am crucified with Christ. That's the same way he was quickened in Ephesians. See how these things go back to back. Galatians, I am crucified with Christ. Ephesians, God hath quickened you together with Christ. I am crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So what is, that, what is that life that Christ lives in us? It is unto God. The life of the new man. The walk of the new man. The conversation of the new man. This quickening life that God has given us. It is Christ in us. And that, listen, Christ living in us is we are dead to the law that through this quickening of Jesus Christ we might live unto God. God did not free you and put you under grace to live unto yourself. Grace is not reigning on account of you, it is raining on account of God and His Son's obedience. The life, now here it is, and the life I now live in the what? I live by what? Of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. He's saying, I'm, I'm dead to the law so that I can live unto God. God crucified me with His Son because that old condemned man could not live unto Him. But in spite of that crucifixion with God's Son, I still live. Yet it's not I. It is Christ that lives in me. And the way I live this life in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so God, this quickening, this quickening, guys, this salvation Paul's talking about here is it has to do with giving you life to live unto God. Amen? People think salvation is just about, you know, at the end of this life, I'm going to heaven. That's all they think about. They think the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is about people going to heaven and hell. And it is much more. We are, we are God's creatures. And as his creatures, we were in disobedience and children of wrath. And now we're not just God's creatures. We are redeemed creatures. And God has given to us by grace this life so that we can live unto him. And he did it by grace. Look at Ephesians 1.19. I want you to notice a little difference here because Ephesians 1.19 and chapter 2 have some similarities. Paul wants us to be enlightened and know what is the exceeding greatness of God's power to us who believe. According to the working of His mighty power which He wrought. We're talking about the work of God. Which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him what? And set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places. You see that? There was a power that God wrought when he raised Christ up and set him at his own right hand. Now the very next section begins with, and you hath he what? Quickened. Now look here. Even when we were dead in sins, notice there's an extra step to us. What God did for Christ is he raised him from the dead and set him somewhere. But there's an extra step for you. Because you're dead in sins. Even when we were dead in sins, hath what? Quickened. Quickened us together with Christ and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. You see it? God raised him, set him at his own right hand. Well, he's raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places. Also, how? By quickening us together with Christ. Do you know what that means? The power 
that God wrought in his son when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand is he made that last Adam a quickening spirit. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. But the day you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. And through that man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And every one of us was dead in sins. And when Jesus Christ came into the world, died on that cross, was buried, and God raised him and set him at his own right hand, it was to make him a quickening spirit to those who were dead in sins. Amen, amen, amen. So let's not get out of order here. Everybody runs from believing the gospel to seated in heaven. And they bypass the quickening of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's an order to God's salvation. Christ died first. He was buried second. And he rose from the dead. And you are buried with him by baptism that as he was raised from the dead, even so we also should walk in newness of life. But how do we walk in that life? By this quickening spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, where is that quickening spirit? On the pages of these epistles. By grace, through Faith. God, by His grace, through faith, is quickening you by the Spirit of His Son. Why? Why is He doing it? He's quickening those that are dead in sins to live unto Him and to be raised up and made to sit in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Why is He doing it? That in the ages to come. You see, Ephesians 2.8 is an explanation of this verse. That in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through who? What God is doing right now, in this work, we are his workmanship. What God is doing right now at this present time by his grace in saving you, quickening you, raising you up, seating you in the heavenly places in Christ is so that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of that grace. Amen. That grace has been dispensed. Right here are the riches of his grace. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. The riches of his grace have already been dispensed and through faith, through faith we receive them. One of these days, God is going to take us and display us in the ages to come as, as the crown of His workmanship. Look at what I created. Look at these dead sinners that I redeemed and quickened and raised and seated. When people think of this kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, it's very limited in how they think about it. God is doing a work through faith to quick and raise and sit us in heavenly places so that in the ages to come, He might show something. And His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You want to understand that kindness toward you through Christ? Jesus Christ died the death you were worthy of. 